validating identification numbers and universal product codes. Today, y'all, you are going to be listening to me kind of explain and do these problems, and then you are going to be asked to do something very similar with credit card numbers because it's the same concept. So as we are working on this first section, just keep in mind that you're going to do something very similar to it on your own here at the end of the video. All right. So universal product codes, UPCs, we often call these. Uh, these are on pretty much every single thing that you buy, right? And each of these numbers has something called a check digit. So we're going to break down how these numbers are, are made and how they are, or how they work in terms of uh, preventing error. Okay, so each number has three parts. They have a six digit manufacturer number. They have a five digit product number. And then the last number in the UPC is called the check digit. All right, so as an example, right, the Dr. Pemper Company has a manufacturing number of 078000. And every single thing that they make, every different variety, every different flavor, every single thing that they make has its own product number. All right, and these are assigned by something called the Uniform Code Council. Anyway, we we'll use these to then look at this check digit at the end. This is the number that we're most interested in today. Each of these numbers is made so that when you multiply the first digit by three, multiply the first digit by three and then add the second digit, multiply the third digit by three and add the fourth digit, all of these work until the very last digit. And here's what happens. All right, you got a formula for it right here if you want to use that here in a minute. Every other number is basically multiplied by three, and then when you add them all up, it's going to end in a sum of zero. All right, it's going to end in a sum of zero. Not zero itself, actually, but it could end in a 50 or a 60 or a 70 or a 100 or whatever, but like as long as the sum ends in a zero, that means that it's correct. So the check digit number, this last number, whatever your total was up to that, plus the check digit number should end in a zero. So let me kind of give you an example of this. Here we have a product, sorry, we have a UPC number, and I'm going to demonstrate that it's valid. All right, well, all we got to do here is break it down in the pattern in this formula above. So the first number gets multiplied by 3. All right, so that 0 gets multiplied by 3, then we add the next number, 5. Okay, the next number gets multiplied by 3, which is 8, and the following number just gets added, so that it, oh, sorry, not 8, yeah, 8. The next number is just a 2, so that gets added. The next number gets multiplied by 3, which is a 0. The following number is a 0. The next number is a 4, so 3 gets multiplied by 4, plus the next number, which is 8. The following number, which is, let's see here, another 8, okay, gets multiplied by 8. Where am I? I'm on this 2 here, so then just plus 2. And then I'm going to do the last number, 6, which gets multiplied by 3. And the final number is just 5. All right, but this 5, we do call it the check digit number. So if this is the correct number, we should have something ending in a 0. So let's go ahead and let's check. We're going to have to just type this in our calculator here. So 3 times 0 plus 5. You know what, I'm just going to multiply in my head. I think you can follow along. So plus 24, plus 2, plus 0, plus another 0, plus 12, plus 8, plus 24, plus 2, plus 18, plus 5. Let's see what we get. Hopefully we get something in a 0. We get 100. All right, so because it ends in a 100, sorry, because it ends in a 0, we know that it is a valid UPC number. By the same train of thought, let's demonstrate that this next number two is an invalid UPC number, which basically just means that when we do what we just did earlier, the number that we get when we total everything is not going to be a zero. All right, so first number is multiplied by three, second number is just added, plus three times two, plus two, plus three times zero, plus zero plus 3 times 4, plus 8, plus 3 times 8, plus 2, plus 3 times 6, plus 5. And what do we get here? All right, so again, I'm going to do the multiplication in my head. I'm just going to add up what I see. So I'm going to do a 0 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 8 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 
plus 5 plus 6 plus 2 plus 0 plus a 0 again which I didn't have to type plus 12 plus 8 plus 24 plus 2 plus 18 plus 5 and I get 82 all right for the simple fact that it does not end in 0 this is an invalid UPC. All right, so we're kind of building on the next one. It says, what if someone made a single digit error when entering this invalid number? A single digit error is just like it sounds, and it means that they miss, um, made a mistake putting in these numbers, but just in one place, right, a single digit error. Can you tell which digit is incorrect? Well, not really, right? Because if you mess up one, you probably messed up the whole number. So you might have messed up, I mean, I guess anything other than a zero, right? So maybe you mess up the five or the two or the two. You're not going to know for sure which one is messed up. You're just going to know that it's not valid. So uh, why don't we just say, let's see here how I want to phrase this. We're just going to say, no, any digit might have been, any digit. might have been misentered. Okay. All right, so the same code we're talking about in this part B says change one digit, but not the check digit, which means check digit is the last digit, right? So not the last digit in this invalid number, so the resulting number is valid and prove that it is valid. Well, think about it. It ended in a two, I needed to end in a zero, so I can make one of my numbers less by two, or I can make one of my numbers greater by 8, or um, if I probably wouldn't want to mess with anything that's being multiplied by 3 just because that's going to make the math harder. So let's throw an example here. Okay, I'm going to leave the first one alone. 3 times 0 plus 5. All right, so right now, you know what, here. I'm going to work smarter, not harder here just a second. Let's do this. Okay, let's write this down here. All right, so this was my original calculation. Well, I would like to change, I'm going to change this number right here, this 5. All right, I need my number to end in a 0, so it already ended in an 82. So I'm going to make it end in an 80 by simply changing this 5 to a 3, right? because then it's going to be two numbers less than it was originally, and then this is going to end in an 80, and it will be valid. Now, that's definitely not the only thing you could have done. There are a bunch of different ways we could have done this. You could have made it a 90, right? It doesn't have to end in 80. You could have made it be a 90, but it, as long as it ends in zero, you're good. All right. Number three, determine the check digit for the UPC number, blah, 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 and it ends in a D, right? We don't know what that is yet. So we're going to use our formula again. This time the first number is a 3, so 3 times 3 plus the next number 8 plus 3 times 1 plus 3 plus, let's see here, 3, 8, 1, 3, the next number is 7, so 3 times 7 plus 0 plus 3 times 0 plus 9 plus 3 times 2 plus 1 plus 3 times 3 plus D, which we don't know what that is. So let's go ahead and let's total just this first, everything but D, right? All right, let's do this. I'm going to do 9 plus 8 plus 3 plus 3 plus 21 plus 0 plus 0 plus 9 plus 6 plus 1 plus 9. All right. So right now I'm ending in 69, right? So right now I have 6, <laughs> well, right now I have uh, 69 plus D, this, so this number needs to be a 1. That way it will end, it will be a 70 for the sum, and it will end in 0. All right. So we're going to make the D value a 1. Problem 4. Suppose you entered an 8 instead of a 9 when recording this number. Explain why the UPC method will detect this error. Well, if you put in a 9, an 8 instead of a 9 right here, 
whatever your sum is previously plus this number plus 6 is supposed to end in a 0, right? So if this was supposed to be an 8 and you put a 9, well, those that number is not only one off, it's actually going to be more than that because that last number is being multiplied by 3. Right? If, so if you put an 8 in here, then you're calculating 24 when it really should have calculated 27. So it's not going to end in a 0 like it should have. It'll be off by about 3. Okay? All right. The next thing you guys are going to be doing is working on the credit card numbers assignments. Just make sure that you are paying attention and you understand how credit cards are different, but the ideas still stay the same, right? You're working with check digits and you're looking for those summed totals.